um, part one of the video that we did on a Saturday class and I opened it up to everyone, not just the paid members, but um, those classes are normally reserved for those who are paid members. This is going to be part two of the video where we actually got the machine and we're going to do a little tear down and we're going to talk about the pieces that we talked about in the video. We went ahead and removed the door and the front and rear panel so we can speed up the process and not wait to, um, to uh, um, go about this. So what you're seeing right here is the condensing unit. This is part of the refrigeration system. And in the video, there was something called an accumulator. This has two accumulators in here. This is the condenser accumulator. We'll go through the refrigerant flow. But accumulator is supposed to take and trap liquid refrigerant and help boil that refrigerant off. And one of the reasons why we have it is not when it goes into the condenser here, because when it goes into the condenser, we're trying to turn the freon to a, to a liquid, not boil the liquid off. But when we want to release the ice from the evaporator, we do want that refrigerant to boil a little bit because we want it to turn to vapor as it goes into the evaporator so it puts heat and absorbs heat so that the, the, the slab can come off. So um, this is just a cover that when, when you close the door, it keeps the ice trapped in there. This bucket here is just a cooler just like a cooler you buy and you put a bag of ice for the beach and you put that in the unit that it does not store ice permanently ice is constantly melting inside here even though the ice machine is producing ice same way commercial machines produce ice mm -hmm. the ice is constantly melting we call that wet ice mm -hmm. that the ice is not there like if your refrigerator at your home makes ice and if you turn the ice maker off that ice will stay in that refrigerator until you either throw it out or until you, you use yeah. it well, this ice is constantly melting and running out the back, and we'll show you that in a minute, and making fresh ice because they don't want ice to sit in here and get stale because ice will absorb odors and create a taste if it gets old. So this thing is producing ice constantly until it fills up. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this cover here. Let me just uh, take these two screws out and get this cover off. Wrong size. And we'll go through the whole machine. We're going to do a complete teardown. We'll take all the parts out and identify them and tell you what they do. Let me just get this screw out here. This is real hard to get these screws out. They self tap them into the plastic here. Probably should have taken these out too before the video. Just pause that. So we removed this co cover. This is the ice bin, and this is just a cover that they've added that it just pulls from the bottom. It took me a second to figure it out. Pulls from the bottom, it comes down. And what we see here is something called the cutter grid. And I'll, I'll open it up as we go. This cutter grid is low voltage. This thing runs off of DC volts. And in the other video, I've already told about the voltage. But this thing makes one big slab of ice like this. It doesn't make small cubes at first. It makes one slab of ice, and that slab of ice slides off of that slab back in there, and I'll show it to you, and comes out to this cutter grid. This cutter grid is made up of several wires, low voltage, and it puts out just enough heat to cut the ice, but not to totally melt the ice, because if it was really, really hot, it would cut fast, but the ice cubes would be all water by then, and that water would drip on your ice that you already produced and help melt that. So to remove the cutter grid, we have one quick disconnect up here. Once these two quarter inch screws are out and you unplug this quick disconnect, we can pull this cutter grid assembly out. So, there's no insulation on these wires. If you touch them, there is a potential to get shocked, but because it's low voltage, you really won't like feel it. It's almost like the voltage that's like on a doorbell of a house. Mm -hmm. So this wire is one piece of wire that's strained to the whole thing. They do sell a rewiring kit where the wire ends up here on this screw and it's insulated here and it runs off this wire and the other end is over here. 
So it comes in and it runs back and forth this way and then it goes back and forth that way. And it actually has two layers. If you look, there's a top layer and a bottom layer. The two of them are not touching. So it cuts in strips and then that strip drops down and cuts in another strip. And another slab could come in and land on top of it and just push it down and then the square cubes fall out into our bin. So we have these little plastic pieces on the end. They're supposed to be when the slab slides onto it that doesn't slide off of our cutter grid, okay? So you can buy this as a whole assembly. It costs a little bit more, but it's a lot easier than trying to rewire this, okay? So then here we got just a holder for our ice scooper so that you don't lose it in the bottom of the bin. We're going to take everything out one at a time here. So this is the slab. So water's poured over here. We'll get a closer look at this as we get it open even more. Water slow, flows over here. This little trowel right here is just supposed to prevent it from going all the way out and running into where the ice is. So this guides that water back into the recirculation reservoir here. And we have a pump in here that pumps the water back up. So it's constantly circulating water over the evaporators we're producing ice. So this here is where the ice is made, then slides out onto that cutter grid. The cutter grid cuts it into squares and it drops down in here. So we're, here we have our controls and one of the things that they have added was a filter assembly to the ice maker. Back in the day, the filter assemblies had to be installed behind on the water line coming in. So now the manufacturer said, well, if we design it with a filter, we can sell filters and make more money. So they put filters in our refrigerators and our ice machines. This does not come with a filter. Guess what? You buy the ice machine, you have to buy the filter separate. Mm. So they don't even give you one filter with this unit when you buy it. So uh, it does have a diagnostic mode. We're not going to go over that today. We're going to just do a complete teardown and component identification. And uh, we'll just tear this whole thing apart and identify the parts. So over here on this side, you'll see another plug and you'll see this wire run into a sensor down here. This is a bin level sensor. So what that means is when the ice builds up, once the ice reaches this bottom part of the sensor, and I'm going to go ahead and take it out now. Once the ice reaches the bottom part of that sensor, it tells the board, okay, we have enough ice, stop ice production. Now remember I said that ice is constantly melting. So even if the customer doesn't go in there, eventually that ice will melt and drop down below the sensor. It'll start producing ice again on its own. That is also low voltage. And just one screw right here. And a quick disconnect, you pull this off. You do not have to take the cutter grid to replace this. You just have to reach over the cutter grid to unplug it. And then just one screw puts it in and, and it's installed. So this is, what type of sensor is this? Moisture sensor. Moisture sensor. Moisture sensor. It's, it's a bin sensor, but what type of part senses temperature? Uh, we always talk thermistor. about it. It starts with Therm a T. Thermistor. Thermistors. 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 So this is a thermistor. It senses a temperature, and the resistance value changes, and that's how the board knows um, whether it's got ice or, or not in the bin. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in here and try to get into the components. Down here, it's hard for you to see. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. This is our drain pump. Not all the older machines have a separate drain pump. It just used gravity fed for the drain. If you had to service this, we can pull this pump out right from here. I'm not going to take it out here. I'm going to pull the whole assembly out and show it to you. We'll pull the pump apart while it's out. And then down here is a little cap. And again, I'll show it to you while it's out. This little cap you can remove. Like if you had to clean it or maintain it, this reservoir here can be drained manually just by taking this cap off and all the water just going to flow right out into the bin. And in the bin, it has a hole in the very back where that water will drain out the back of the unit. And that's a reservoir? This yeah. is a recirculation reservoir. This is what fills up and then it, then it recirculates that water over it. Mm -hmm. Now here's one of the changes that are different. The older ice machines just filled up with water by a specific amount of time. If your water valve was clogged or something, the ice bucket wouldn't fill it with enough water. Mm. This machine uses a water level sensor. 
And when it fills up with water, it knows how much water is in the machine by that sensor. When it's producing ice, mm -hmm. the water from here is flowing up here, starts to freeze. Mm -hmm. So little by little, the water in the recirculation reservoir is going yeah. to turn to ice. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have very little water in the bottom here. At that point, the sensor is going to sense the water level dropped. And when a certain amount of water dropped from the point it says it's full to the point that it's produced ice, once it gets to a certain level, that's it says, hey, the ice slab thickness should be a certain thickness based on the amount of water that was in there that's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's when it goes into ice ejection. Mm -hmm. The older ones on the bottom of the evaporator here, is a thermistor. This one still has an evaporator thermistor. It's right here. It's hard for me to show you, but we'll take it apart and try to find it. Uh, on the older ones, the thermistor is going to sense the suction line, the line that's coming back from the evaporator back to the compressor down there, and it's going to know the temperature of the refrigerant, and at that point, it knows when to drop the ice. So the old ones, ice ejection mm -hmm. is initiated by the evaporator thermistor. The newer ones, it's initiated its ice ejection by the water level sensor. Mm -hmm. Now, if the water level sensor fails, it defaults, I think, to 25 minutes, automatically goes into an ice ejection cycle. Because mm -hmm. it only takes between 20 and 25 minutes yeah. to make one slab of ice. Mm -hmm. Now, we call this a 50-pound ice machine because it takes about 24 hours, if you don't take any ice out, to fill this bin up with ice and it holds approximately 50 pounds of ice, okay? So now that we got that, we're gonna go and try to uh, remove these covers. I'm gonna take this cover off first. Give me one second here. This is just a cover on top of the reservoir. Now right here, this little gray hose is coming down from our water valve. If you can see the water valve here and you can see this gray hose, that runs all the way up to here where this gray hose is. So when it goes into ice ejection, the refrigerant from being cold is coming from the condenser directly. We don't even go through the condenser. We just pump it straight up there and we use the heat of the refrigerant to release the ice. While it's doing that, the water valve is also energized and filling this thing up with water. Okay, so as ice is ejecting, the water valve is resupplying that container with ice. So we have some connectors here. We're going to go ahead and just pull this assembly out. Got a quarter inch nut back here. Then I'm going to take this out. 